With engineering expertise and a remote desert location, we can test what burning jet fuel can do to steel. Emertech, the energetic materials research and testing center, designs explosions to meet the criteria of this test. At Emertech, we do tests and research in all kinds of energetic materials. So anything's explosive, pyrotechnic, if you light it off and it gives lots of heat and lots of noise, then we pretty much test it out here. To show whether heat can really affect steel, an experiment will pit a one-ton I-beam against 700 gallons of jet fuel. So what we are trying to show is that if we took a weighted beam in a fuel flame, and held it until it comes up to the temperature which weakens the steel, it will actually fail that beam. In this test, a steel I-beam like those in the Twin Towers will be subjected to the heat from a jet fuel fire. The same flammable liquid spilled from the crashed airliners. Will the fire burn hot enough to deform the steel within the same window of time as the original structural failure? And then we're going to just go get the beam and it's 20 foot, so we'll just center it up on here. On one of the testing pads, workers construct a fire pit, which will contain a reservoir of jet fuel. Though the World Trade Center had fireproofing on the beams, the National Institute of Standards and Technology reports that material had been knocked off at the moment of impact. And where the insulation was dislodged, the temperature of the steel rose rapidly. So in our test, a bare beam is used. We're not doing an actual full-scale beam because to load a full-scale beam would take an immense load. And so we've scaled it back. We just have a small I-beam. It's a W8 by 18, which makes me it's 8 inches high, 18 pounds per foot. And we're loading it with about 3,000 pounds. Unless you want to tack them on, lift them and cut them off, tack them on. These weights ensure that the beam was scaled to match the design load of the steel. This beam is then placed over the fire pit. The 700 gallons of jet fuel is now pumped into the pit. Start grounding? Yeah. The fuel truck must be grounded. Any stray spark could ignite the jet fuel. Small valve open and then just control it with that one. The temperature of the fire is a critical factor. Therefore, a thermocoupler is set in place to monitor temperature. Basically, this is a liquid fuel. It's got to vaporize before it can burn. So we just got to get warm enough to start vaporizing and uh, burn it. An electric match detonates the fuel 500 yards away from any personnel. And we put it in an empty box as a flotation device. So it'll float on the fuel for a little while. The jet fuel is calculated to burn for 30 minutes. Two, one. Will the metal maintain its structural integrity? Within two minutes, the thermocoupler temperature peaked just above 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Complete structural failure took less than four minutes. The steel twisted in the heat and the weights fell off. Obviously, in this environment where you're getting 18 to 2,000 degrees, 
uh, the steel is not going to withstand its strength for more than about five minutes. This experiment concludes that exposed steel heated by jet fuel will commence to lose its strength far below its 2600 degree Fahrenheit melting point. Within minutes, an unstable structure is created. In the World Trade Center, this heat would have been more than sufficient to soften the steel. And this combined heat and the weight of the structure would have caused deformation across entire floors. Of course, the World Trade Center managed to stand for more than five minutes after the impact. So they weren't seeing quite these kinds of temperatures. But still, this is showing that if you heat up steel, uh, it is going to lose strength and it will fail.